Okay, so well in the last class you might have noticed that uh, we sort of derived how to find the momentum um, associated with, um, well actually how to find the momentum probability distribution associated with the wave function. Uh, let's, let me go back and describe. So in the last class we were saying that if we have a plane wave, this wave function is something like this. Px minus Et. Now if we take a derivative of this del P over del X, then we'll see that we get I P over H bar psi. Now you see this is nothing but sort of an eigenvalue problem where um, del over del X is an operator and it gives us an eigenvalue P and we get back the wave function psi and why we can rearrange this to get p equals minus i h bar del over del x. So this when this is an operator, so when it acts on a wave function it gives the um, the momentum of the particle. Uh, so um, there's one more thing we can do is that in three dimensions actually if there is not just x but x y z this sort of gets modified to this. Okay, um, which is same as uh, in this case as you can see that we, we it returned us a fixed value of p because you know it's a plane wave it has a fixed frequency which has a fixed momenta uh, so far so good. Uh, this wave is actually not normalizable because it extends throughout the x-axis and by normalize normalizable means this cannot hold true for this particular wave and this is also uh, this is not an a square integrable psi is not is called a square integrable function. But instead of using a simple wave, one can add many many waves to create a wave packet. So this is not localized in time uh, or this uh, or position, it's not time, but this guy is localized in position and is normalizable or is quite integrable. But this this equation does not change. Uh, it's, not, it's not that this is valid only for that because you can always break this in many many frequency components something like let's say A P1 plus B P2 plus C P3 plus so on to generate this wave function or this wave packet which is localized and we see that when we uh, and each of these has a momentum contribution and this is where when you when you calculate something like this psi p psi for this particular wave packet you see this is, it gives us the expectation value of the momenta um, which will be based on these ABCs. Um, we'll talk about this more but the basic the, the main main point of this lesson is that this is the momentum operator. Very similar to like uh, we had a vector, we if we op operate it by um, a rotation matrix, it gets rotated. We can also, um, there can be other kind of um, uh, uh, operations like you can scale it down, uh, we can in invert it um, uh, and we can rotate it. This, uh, ro there are many, many, many operations in this particular case p is acting in this operator p is acting in such a way that it um, it it actually produces the or it gives it throws back the momentum of associated with the um, the state of the system okay so if um, so the psi well the, for this particular kind of a function p is fixed so it throws back the exact value of p which simply means that there is no uncertainty in P, but there is 
the uncertainty in position here as you can see is infinite so it still is not violating uncertainty principle but if you have a generic case when uh, you know you can see that this, this sort of is an eigenfunction this is sort of an eigenfunction of the momentum operator because when a momentum operator operates on an eigenfunction it throws back the eigenvalue and the eigenfunction back but if you have a generic case then we do really do not get the eigenvalue back but it's sort of an expectation of the operator so um, given this um, we can also talk about uh, the the position operator which tells us the expectation of the um, position so if we they have we have this some wave function psi then expectation of x we know is going to be this now x can extend now here now we have well defined variable x psi depends on x and we have the expectation value of x now here also x actually is a uh, is an operator so uh, we have now we have the, we, we see that position as well as movement are actually are not really variables like in classical mechanics they are more considered like an operator uh, in um, classical physics in, in in quantum mechanics in classical physics the, the values are the, the uncertainties don't play any role but in here uncertainties are playing role and that's what, and to take care of them these uncertainties uh, the, the, the wave wave like nature and this wave like nature is also reflects as finding the um, the, uh, the the properties of the system not as the exact value of the system uh, not as the exact value of the property but an, as an expectation value of the property and this expectation value property is sort of embedded in this kind of behavior that p and x are not really variables anymore they are sort of an operators so it's like a hand waving argument but the point i hope it's clear okay moreover we can show that both x and p are actually hermitian operators well this is very easy to see here that if you try to find i find out this we know that this will be written as psi star x psi dx it goes from minus infinity to infinity and you can because x actually is a real number it can be moved to the other side and we can rewrite this equation as x star psi star uh, phi star psi dx and this is nothing but x phi so you see x is same as x adjoint proving um, proving uh, uh, that momentum operator is uh, um, also hermitian uh, is not little is not really that straightforward but we can do that let's get a new page here so if you want to prove that phi p psi we have to prove the equals p phi psi we know that p is minus i h bar del over del x and uh, we can rewrite this in an integral form as you can see uh, the the wave function just depends on continuous variable x here uh, it does not depend uh, so he, x actually is changing and has um, and the basis function is not really uh, the basis function x is not really uh, uh, limited in number uh, or is not it actually is con continuously changing so they are in finite number but in general a wave function can be composed of continuous variable as well as discrete eigenfunctions depending on the type of type of solution or type of type of system we are handling so wave function can be composed both uh, from continuous variable and from uh, discrete eigenfunctions and we'll talk about these kind of states uh, or situations later so given this we can write minus infinity to infinity psi star uh, for now let's just consider del over del x this and we'll incorporate this later let's find a relation to prove this dx and uh, we know we can do it by 
partial derivation we can do uh, par integration by um, parts and this is we get minus minus infinity to infinity psi x del phi star del x dx okay now this should be zero because we know phi and psi are square integrable which means that um, which means that uh, integral of phi star phi dx equals 1 and similarly for psi which means it really cannot extend up to infinity so at infinity it should go to 0 so this goes to 0 and from here we can show that and if we just call this operator uh, d we can show that phi we just shown actually d psi equals minus psi d phi okay now if we um, in include this um, operator here then we know that and we include this i h bar in this d so if we rewrite something like phi p psi then we know we'll write it as phi minus i h bar partial x or well actually I should write minus i h bar d phi and then we can take i h bar out minus i h bar so it's minus i h bar we get phi r t okay I should have written this as psi but I made a mistake so this should actually be psi and psi okay and we know this should be nothing but minus this d phi and this whole thing actually so now we can go we can actually write this whole thing as so this left hand side equals right hand side can be written as phi p psi and equals well actually I think I made a mistake here as you can see this should be star here you see I can take this whole star outside I can t so star is acting here I can't take the whole star outside so that becomes psi star and goes here this becomes phi and goes here so this is the true relation okay so so this is fine but this thing which is that can be written as minus i h bar star psi d phi so and from here we can see that p and actually there's a star missing we can see that this is same as this 
And if you pay, pay close attention, if you, re, if you pay close attention and sort of expand this, you will see that this is what what you have achieved is nothing but that that phi p psi is equal to p phi psi. These three, uh, one and two, are equivalent. So we have proven that p is a Hermitian operator. So p should have a real eigenvalues, and that makes sense. So you see, x here is the basis function. As we said, it can be continuous basis function or it can be discrete basis function. X here is a continuous basis function that is uh, uh, describing the wave function here. But we can actually change the basis function from x to p because p again is also a Hermitian operator. X is a Hermitian operator which has some eigenstate and the corresponding eigenvalues. Um, and similarly, the p is now is actually an Hermitian operator and it has some basis eigenfunction. Again, it's continuous in nature. And so instead of writing psi as a function of x, uh, a wave function can also be written not as a function of x, but also can be written as a function of the momenta. And that will also be a topic of uh, one of the lessons. Uh, next class, we'll talk about um, some cases where we can apply Schrodinger equation.